Namo Namaha Swagatam. In this video, let's quickly turn to another second level topic in Sanskrit called the verbal prefixes or the upasargas in Sanskrit. Uh, you can sit back and kind of relax for this one. Uh, I think it's going to be a fairly easy and straightforward topic. Just something you got to know, but it's not hard to learn it. Uh, what prefixes do is to enhance or modify or contort the verbal roots, the meanings of the verbal roots. European languages use prefixes all the time. Like, for example, in the word prefix, the pre of prefix is a prefix that gets prefixed to the root fix to change its meaning in a subtle way. How's that for a statement for you? Uh, in any way, in Sanskrit, the verbal prefixes are known as the upasargas, uh, prefixed, basically. And there's three kinds of things that these upasargas do to the meaning of the verb. One, they can be what's known as pleonastic. That means that they don't actually change the meaning of the root very much. Uh, one example here is the root op, which means to get or obtain. If you add the prefix pra to op, it doesn't change the meaning, actually. Apnoti means he or she or it gets. Prapnoti also means he, she or it gets. No difference. Uh, the second thing that upasargas do is to add their own specific shade of meaning to the meaning of the verb root. One example is the prefix ud. Ud means up. It has the directional idea of upwards. Uh, the root ta means to stand or stay, and in, in, it's conjugated, of course, in the verbal, in the present tense as tishtati, he, she, or it stands or stays. So if you add ud to the root ta, it becomes ut tishtati. That means he, she, or it gets up or stands up, wakes up. Uh, sometimes the prefix just changes the root's meaning into a totally different idiomatic meaning that has no relation to the verb or the, the prefix. Uh, one of the most common and celebrated verbs for this is the root hru. Uh, hru by itself means steal or take away. Harati, he, she, it steals or takes away. Uh, like hari, harati. Uh, the prefix, any prefix you add to this generally just changes the, the meaning of this verb entirely. If you add vi, for example, which usually means opposite or against something, uh, we get viharati, which means actually to relax or have fun, play, to pass the time. Um, uh, there's a number of different prefixes that get attached to verbs. You just kind of have to learn them as you encounter them. But to get us started, I thought we could start with about 10 common prefixes uh, and their basic meanings and how these usually impact verb roots. Uh, and then also look at idiomatic examples of each of these where the meaning doesn't have anything to do with the prefix or the verb. Uh, we just saw ud, which means upwards, right, in ut. Tishtati. The opposite of that is the prefix ni, which means down, downwards, low, that kind of thing. So if you take the verb patati to fly or fall and add ut, it means ut patati means to fly, to fly up. Kagaha ut patati, the bird flies up. But if you add ni to pat, uh, you would get the meaning to fall down. So ni patati, he, she, it falls down. Vrikshaha ni patati, the tree falls down. Now there's this, the prefix ava, which has the sense of downwards also. The first class root tr, for example, means to cross. Uh, but, uh, so we get sahatarati, he crosses. If you add the ava before the root, it becomes avatarati, meaning he, she, or it crosses down, meaning descends down, like stairs. Uh, this is the root we get the, the common avatara, the descent of the very uh, various Hindu gods and goddesses in human form, like Rama, Krishna, and so on. Uh, they descend to earth, they avataranti. Uh, an idiomatic example of the prefix ava is with the root gum, to go. Avagam means to understand or comprehend something. Avagachami would mean I understand. Avagachami, avagachami, I understand, I get it. Uh, the prefix pra has a directional meaning of forth or forward or ahead. So if you have the verb gum, to go, pragam would mean to go forth, to progress forward. Saha, uh, sa she progresses, she goes forward. The, ver, the word pragati is derived from this verb with prefix meaning progress. Pragati. Uh, pra also has a pleonastic usage, meaning it doesn't often change the meaning of verbs. Uh, there's idiomatic usages too. One example is when pra is placed before hru, our favorite verb, uh, to steal. Uh, pra plus hru means to strike or hit. Uh, nothing to do with stealing or going forward or anything like that. Ramaha praharati, Rama strikes. Ramaha sharena rakshasam praharati, Rama strikes at the demon with an arrow. 
Uh, the opposite prefix of pra is a, which means to come towards something. With gum, to go, a gum means to come. Aham, a, aham gachami, I go. Aham a gachami, I come. Uh, an idiomatic usage of a would be as a prefix before the root nya, which means to know. That gets a lot of idiomatic ones. Uh, sita janati, sita knows. A plus nya means commands. Sita a janati, sita commands, she gives an order. Similar prefix to a is prati, which means against or back towards in a reciprocal action. If wad means to say or speak, prati plus wad means to answer, to reply, to speak back to someone. Rama sitam vadati, Rama speaks to sita. Parantu sita ramam na prati vadati. Sita does not speak back to Rama, it does not answer Rama. Prati can have an idiomatic usage again with dnya, to know. Pratidnya means to make a promise or an oath. So Lakshmanaha pratijanati, Lakshmana promises. Here again, the meaning has nothing to do with the prefix uh, uh, sense of the prefix or the sense of the verb, really. It's an independent new meaning that's formed. Another directional prefix is pari, which means around. It's cognate actually with the old Greek peri, like we get in perimeter or periscope or periphery. Right? Uh, buddy plus gum would mean to walk around something. Buddy gachati. He walks, she walks, it walks around something. Ashwaha ruksham buddy gachati. The horse walks around the tree. An idiomatic usage of buddy is with the root num, meaning to bow. Aham namami shivaya. I bow to Shiva. Right? Buddy plus num means to change or transform or ripen. Palam parinamati. The fruit is ripening. Aham parina mami, I'm changing, I'm getting old, that kind of thing. Uh, how about a couple more prefixes? The prefix anu means after or following something. So anu plus gum would mean to go after something, uh, to follow someone, to chase. Uh, Lakshmana ramam anu gachati. Lakshmana follows after rama. Uh, an idiomatic usage comes with the verb nya to know. Anu plus nya means to give permission. So Ramaha anu janati. This means Rama gives his permission. That's anu. A similar prefix here is upa, uh, which means approaching towards, usually from below, kind of like from a subordinate lower position. So upa plus gum would mean to approach up to someone. Ramaha sitam upagachati. Rama approaches up to Sita. Uh, upa has many idiomatic usages as a prefix. One comes before the root vish, uh, which means to enter, vish, vishati. Ramaha vanam vishati would mean Rama enters the forest, uh, vane vishati. Uh, but upa plus vish would mean to sit. Ramaha upa vishati means Rama is sitting. A couple more. The root V can have two meanings, actually. Uh, the prefix V. One is the opposite of something, when it's flipping the meaning of the verb inversely. Uh, the other is intensively or especially. So if you have smr, meaning to remember, vismr means to forget. Sa smarati, she remembers. Sa vismarati, she forgets. The meaning of intensively comes, for example, with V plus dnya. Dnya means to know. Vijna means to know fully, know well. Uh, Ramaha vijanati. Rama especially knows. Rama knows it thoroughly, scientifically, that kind of thing. The Sanskrit word for science actually is based off of this root. It's the verbal noun vidnyana. The prefix V will also have many, many idiomatic usages. It's kind of one of the most uh, frequently occurring prefixes. You just kind of have to learn them as you see them. Take V plus R, for example. Harati again means to steal, to take away. Vihru, viharati means to have fun, to pass the time, to take pleasure. Uh, pl finally, we have the prefix sum, which is pretty easy to remember. It means together. Uh, it's a cognate with the Latin prefix con, like we get in concert, convention, connect. Uh, sum plus gum means to come together with someone else. Saha samgachati, he comes together with someone else. Uh, an idiomatic usage of sum comes with the root nya, meaning to know. Sum nya can mean a range of things, like to agree on something, to recognize or acknowledge something or someone, to appoint or designate something for a particular purpose. Uh, in the latter sense, it can also use means to signify something. 
so you can say <coughs> sarve sanjana jananti they all agree or tat sanjanati it signifies this or that so those are some examples of prefixes or upasargas uh, there's many many others that we'll encounter in our studies and as you learn more and more vocabulary you'll start to get kind of an intuitive sense of how these upasargas work there's kind of two points i wanted to make in closing First, you can string upasargas along. You can have more than one prefix to a verb, uh, and it'll change the meaning of the root accordingly. So, for example, you can have ud plus a plus hru. Ud, a, hru. Hru means to take away or steal, harati. Ud plus a plus hru, uda harati, means he or she gives an example or an illustration of something. Sum plus a plus gum means to assemble together or convene together. Te sarve samagachanti. They convene around something. They all come together around something. Uh, finally, one more point I want to make is that if you're, use, if you're using the prefixes and you want to make an imperfect, the lung, the a uh augment has to go after all of these prefixes. It has to stick right onto the verb stem itself not onto the prefixes. So if you had the prefix abhi plus dnya, which means to recognize abhi dnya, you can say sita ramam abhi janati. Sita recognizes rama. If you want to make it a past tense though, it becomes sita ramam abhi yajanat. Sita recognized rama. Notice how the a augment is coming right after abhi here, right before the stem. The short e of abhi is now sandhid into a yakara, uh, the semi-vowel ya because of the e uh, sandhi. Okay, so those are the prefixes. Take some time to work through the full chart of them. Practice making different verbs with the prefixes uh, and then converting them into that simple past tense, the imperfect, the lung. Uh, next time we'll tackle a topic that's very important, but also kind of straightforward, thankfully, which is known as the infinitives, the tumanantas. Uh, Till then, thank you for watching. See you next time. Punarmilamaha dhanyavadaha.